for Labor this week announced Samantha Mostyn will be our next Governor-General, but her appointment has not come without controversy due to her long history of activism. Her CV includes Chair of the Climate Council, Deputy Chair of Diversity Australia, Chair of the Women's Equality Task Force, and we discovered today an anti-Australia Day pro-voice supporter who has previously called January 26 Invasion Day. Let's bring in my panel broadcaster Craig Foster and New South Wales One Nation leader Tanya Mihalik. Good Hi evening guys. to you both. Good Lovely to see you again. As Good always. You. Craig, we'll start with you. What do you make of her appointment? Is she a corporate activist in your view? Well, firstly, she's a very uh, good friend, very close friend of mine, a love friend, actually. She's an amazing person. She's a brilliant Australian woman. Uh, she's very eminent Australian. Uh, and I don't support particularly the position of Governor-General. As you know, I'm co-chair of the Republic yes. and I want to see our own head of, of state, course. right? But yes. I do think when it comes to the position, given that it's still there at the moment, uh, that she's a wonderful choice. But what I will say is I saw a lot of the media over the last couple of years and a lot of... the uh, last couple of days and a lot of... A media uh, are really concerned about her comments in recent years. Of course, she's not in the role yet, but... And I am concerned about how they're going to attack King Charles and William, mm. right? Because if that's a problem, then, like, those guys are in a lot of trouble because, I mean, King Charles, everyone knows, he's a climate activist, right? Mm. So, you know, he's... Been, I mean, he was at COP28 last mm. year mm. advocating for climate action from Rishi Sunak. He was actually calling on the, the UK government to do more on climate. And just last week, actually, I think it was the last couple of weeks, you saw William engaging himself in politics in relation to Gaza, mm. actually, and being criticised. Mm -hmm. Now, they're the head of state. So Sam Austin is only the Governor-General who answers to our actual head of state, who's King Charles. Mm -hmm. So conventions in the positions, this is when Sam gets in the position say that they should stay out of that. Mm. So, like, you know, I'm sure people are going to be attacking King Charles now and probably asking him to immediately resign from the position. Now, I don't support <laughs> that. But I don't support that, right? Because I, I want an really took that right <laughs> I want an orderly <laughs> transition, yeah. right? I want an orderly and I want to work respectfully with Charles and with the family and with the yeah. institution. Right. But I can understand people saying that it's disgraceful his mm -hmm. corporate, you know, his social advocacy mm. yeah. and the political advocacy of his family. Mm. And what that means is if those two are ruled out, we're now talking about Prince George and he's only 10 years <laughs> old. So we're going to end up with a child as <laughs> current head of state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you never know. I mean, the late <laughs> Queen, she was young when she became the head of state. So, look, you know, but I, I understand the point that you're making uh, there. Tanya, do, do you agree? Do you think that, overall, she is a good appointment despite the activism background? I think she's a very polarising uh, choice, actually. Um, but, of course, Albanese knew that and, uh, and he knew that when he made that uh, decision. And it's important to understand the way Albanese operates. This isn't a decision that he just made last week, OK? He has um, been Prime Minister now for well over um, 18 months. He knows exactly the positions um, that he's going to appoint his friends and his inner circle to. Mm. Uh, he has been... Um, He's a socialist left member of the Labor Party. You have to remember that. He's part of the hard left. Uh, he has a very large inner circle of friends and hangers-ons and people that have been waiting to be fed, OK? Mm -hmm. And he will appoint people, as he sees fit, into these positions. Um, and I don't think he's going to care one iota um, what the general public think. And, and, and you saw that last year when he um, pursued The Voice, the vanity project, knowing that people were so opposed to it and knowing that it was going to divide Australia. Mm. So it doesn't surprise me that he's picked somebody that's, you know, for calling Australia Day, Invasion, invasion day. day. No, it doesn't surprise me that he's done that because mm. that's what Albanese is all about. Mm. I don't think he really cares about this particular institution at all. I think he's going to continue to um, appoint his friends mm. and, and people that he's known for decades, uh, people who have been loyal to him. Mm. And there's no doubt that Sam Austin has been a dear friend of Albanese for a very long time. A captain's pick, would you say? Absolutely, yeah. it's a okay. captain's pick. All right. Well, look, Labor's ambitious goal of building 1.2 million homes over the next five years is shock horror mm. going to fall short. Construction approvals dropped to an 11-year low in February while overseas arrivals are running at four times the pace of new home builds. Craig, yeah. houses aren't being I built. Know, Do you think so that Labor's target was too ambitious? It lo certainly looks like it. Yeah. Um, and I'm just not sure 
who has the plan? I wish I had the plan. If I had the plan to solve this, I'd be making a lot of money. I you know can that build for sure. Some houses, can't you? <laughs> um, but we know that uh, you know the supply chain is just not there. You know the the uh, you know housing industry association mm. is saying that the costs of all of the materials have gone up so much mm. that you know now the approvals are down at the same time that we've got record immigration, right? And so mm. we're kind of in a perfect storm at the moment. Um, I do think that the, the, the conversation needs to happen, you know, at national level as to how we solve it. I did see a really good article last week that was talking about the fact that we have a really big public infrastructure agenda at the same time as we have a, a big housing need and at the same time that we're also having a lot of uh, kind of new... A gas fields and these was things. Was that which on also April, April Fool's Day? Because where's the public infrastructure, <laughs> oh, Craig? I, well, don't, I, I haven't seen yeah. the agenda for public infrastructure. No, for, I mean, all of the <laughs> freeways that were going here and, you know, you've got what's happening in New South Wales where they've had to put some of it off. And all, of course, yeah. all those costs are yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, they're not funding There's a big agenda in Victoria and elsewhere. And what's happening is it's stretching all of our labour force and we just don't have yeah. enough tradies. And so yeah. what's happening is it's kind of like a blanket. It can't stretch to That's, doing all of these things. Yeah. And we're going to have to make a decision mm. about where our workforce is best put now and certainly mm. housing for I think for most of us is an area where we need to really uh, prioritise. Well, it's crucial, uh, isn't it? I like that, that analogy, a perfect storm. Tanya, yes. do you agree? Well, it is a perfect storm, but it's one that he knew was going to happen because in August last year, when Albanese... Um, uh, amended the original um, housing target of 1 million to 1.2 million. He was told very clearly by the mm. Master Builders Association, by the industry experts, that it wasn't um, achievable. Right. He was told that directly at that time, despite that they kept waving in migration levels mm -hmm. to record highs. Uh, and they knew the construction costs were I incredible. I think it's 40% has been added on to construction yeah, costs. Yeah. Yeah. At the yeah. same time, you've got state Labor governments out there putting new levies. The state mm. New South Wales Labor government, first thing it did when it got elected last year was added a new levy to new homes mm. just to make it that much harder for developers yeah. uh, and for the industry. So he knew he was walking into a perfect storm, in fact, Albanese, because um, he, he, he waved in, you know, the migration levels, yeah. knew that construction costs are up, energy costs costs are up. Yeah. And I don't think he... I think he accepted that it was going to be a huge fail. No. Uh, I think he knew that it was going to be a fail yeah. and he's accepted that. I think he doesn't... I think housing for him is something that's not even in, in the top five priorities for Albanese. Well, business I mean, groups sort of, have warned him if it, that, that, that the target is too ambitious. So they've been calling it a pipe dream for the last 12 months. Well, they announced it. I mean, he's announced the target, but then he sort of said forthwith everybody else go and do it. OK? Yeah. He's kind of told everybody, here's the target, 1.2 million. I don't know how you're going to do it, mm. okay? He's not helping with any um, tax, you know, I I removing taxes yeah. or encouraging the states to remove the taxes. Yeah. Um, and he's not helping with the costs associated or with any energy relief. Yeah. I mean, it's another broken promise. Yeah. And, and oh. he, I don't think he Well, it is off. good that everyone's focusing on it and the commitment to solve if, or do our best to mm. solve what but is the, the housing crisis, that is good. But the commitment's coming from the private sector, good. Craig. Yeah. It's not yeah. coming from the government. That's Whatever, the wherever it's coming, yeah. Australia's really focused on it for the first time in a long time. Yeah. We realised that we didn't build a lot of housing for a long time. We realised we haven't built virtually any social housing either yeah. and that we need to solve this and, and I think it's it's not only high time yeah. uh, because of cost of living but it's a really important issue for the next generation of Australians. Spot on for the next generation That's, in particular yeah. but also if you're a first Critical. homeowner and, 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 and you're looking now. to get into the market <laughs> right That's now horrible. it's absolutely horrible. Yeah. impossible. Now this is interesting, the PM has billed us taxpayers $750,000 in the first three months of last year. This includes over 180000 on his international travel, 480 Eighty thousand on his employees travel and six grand on family travel. Tanya, mm. Airbus, Albo striking again. Look, Polly's entitlements have really been thrust into the spotlight lately. Mm. Does there need to be greater transparency? Look, it's always amazes me as a state MP how <laughs> much the federal uh, members of parliament get in terms of allowances. But can I just say? Um, the, bit, the more transparency, the better. Mm. And I think it's important that every expense that these members of parliament make, that they sign off on them. Yes. That they, they sign declarations that they were for the right purpose, that they, in fact, took the cheapest option available. That's what I'd like to... Um, but your members of parliament You'd to hope sign so. off. Because yeah. you've actually got to demonstrate and, and prove to the taxpayer that you took 
uh, the most affordable option. So yeah. the idea that both Bowen and Albanese uh, very recently took separate jets to the one location yes. to make the one announcement, yeah. that makes people really sick. Yeah. Uh, you know, in a, in a current climate of cost of living, mm. that makes people really, really angry. Did they make the right choice? Of mm. course not. It's mm. those type of decisions that I think make people the most angriest. Yeah. And when you hear about people um, taking business class when they could have taken economy class, yeah. you know, there's a lot of options that members of parliament can take mm. to reduce the, the level of costs Absolutely. associated Absolutely. with it. Absolutely, they and, can, And they definitely. should be doing that. And, and perhaps they it might be. Be legis need to yeah. be legislated because we've left it up to them Something. to make well, the decision. Yeah. Something needs to be here. Well, that's what we can't agree? do. That's yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. think? I, look, I agree with you. I think um, Australians rightly want more transparency around it. We have seen a number of these issues over many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. so it's just not now. It's no, like it's been constantly and yeah. constantly and constantly. Yeah. So Australians have made really clear that we want greater accountability and transparency across all of government mm -hmm. and governments. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, state, territory, uh, and even councils and the like. And that's why a lot of people. Or I would say all of us, get upset when we hear these issues mm. because we feel as though we are being ripped off and more so particularly during a cost of living crisis where yes. people are really Good doing point. it tough. Well, they are being So they, it all needs to be justified um, and... Perhaps the rules need to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there are, of course, good reasons around it, but we need to understand very clearly what they are. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a, it's a kind of broader issue around politics. I mean, trust in politicians and politics right now mm -hmm. is at, I don't know if it's an all-time low, it but it's at a very <laughs> significant decade-long <laughs> low. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. this is a big part of it is because yeah. we keep hearing these things and people go, well, hang on a minute, like I'm being asked to do this and I'm paying all my taxes, which we are, right? Yeah. And, you know, and then all of a sudden all of this stuff is happening and we and we will not and should not wear it. Yeah. So it's good that this stuff's come out. Mm. Um, and I think what, you know, everyone in Australia needs to be really clear that the rules are working in our favour. Okay. Yeah. But it's also point. important to remember that these Labor politicians were happy to attack the former no, Labor government totally right. on this very oh, issue. That's, that's very true. On much that smaller yeah. expenditures. No, so yeah, I totally find right. that funny yeah. that, um, that, that there's not much hoo-ha now about it. No. Uh, but there certainly well, they need was to be as accountable. pre last election. And this yeah. is what happens with all oppositions mm. and so on. Right? Everyone attacks and then when they're there, they want a different standard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. same standard. The standard is not yours the standard is ours. Yeah. We're the people, mm. we're the citizens mm. yeah. and we'll say what the standards are Yes. and politicians have to abide by them and not the other way around. No, absolutely. There mm. definitely needs to be greater transparency mm. though. I mean, two, Agreed. two Agreed. gas guzzling jets going yeah. to the Hunter this week <laughs> for yeah, an environmental announcement. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. just uh, unbelievable. Absolute shocker. Now, King Charles... Oh, here's well, here my one. Here's this my is one. a Craig Foster <laughs> special <laughs> because King Charles no is telling his travel organisers to speed up plans for a royal tour of Australia in October. Now, this was after he appeared in very high spirits on Easter Sunday, his first public mm -hmm. appearance, of course, since his treatment for cancer began. Look, Craig, we know you are a staunch <laughs> Republican, yeah. Yeah. but look, it looks like the King is still preparing for but his charm of You'll Australia. be happy to visit on that. You'll so be happy great. to be first there up on the line <laughs> to say Absolutely. hello to the King. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> you'll, well, you'll accept the invite. <laughs> yeah. Firstly, I am a staunch Republican because I believe in us, I believe yes. in you, I believe in Tanya, I believe in all of your viewers, I believe in our capability and that this country can do our own thing and stand on our own. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a staunch Republican. It's got actually nothing to do with Charles. I actually like Charles, yeah. right? Um, you know, I think he does a lot of great stuff and I talked about some of it before. I support mm -hmm. his climate advocacy and the like. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that I think it's time for us to do something different. Uh, and that we that we are capable of being our own country, and I want someone to represent us around the world, which is our mm. head of state's role, and we don't have someone currently. And mm. I think that's important in a cost of living crisis. We should have someone spruiking all of our trade, and our head of state does not do that. Mm. He spruiks a different country. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I, I love the fact that he's coming. I want him. I you want to meet him. You want to meet him. You want to meet him. I want to meet him. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, I met um, Fergie, Sarah Ferguson. Yes, Sarah Ferguson. Only yeah. a couple of weeks ago at a conference in Melbourne, like uh, two weeks ago. And I, and I um, you know, spoke with And people thought that the co-chair of the Republic and a, and a royal family member, yeah. or whatever you term her, you know, can't be in the same room. And, and I said, mm. that's ridiculous. Yeah. We respect... All Australians respect the royal family. We respect their p position in our history. Mm -hmm. And all, so I went up to him and said, listen, you know, this is what people... We are friends. In fact, I said to her, we are brother and sister yep. countries. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. we respect each other. Mm -hmm. We are always going to be friends now and in future. Mm -hmm. But you, of course, understand that, you know, it's time for us. And, and of course, they don't have a problem with that. No. Right? 
um, just when we explain to Australians and to the royal family that we, are, we want to do this in a respectful way and mm -hmm. move forward. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't be more thrilled. Firstly, and let me say last well, because I want you to talk. We're running but, out of time. Yeah, out yeah. Lastly, yeah. I'm delighted that he's well. That's yeah. the most important Absolutely. thing. I'm delighted that he out. looks great. Absolutely. Let's see him out here. Tanya, it's good to see We're running out of time, but he is good to see him well. Absolutely. Um, I think everyone's um, pleased that he's recovering. Mm -hmm. And the fact that um, he will come to Australia, I think, will be welcomed by most Australians. Yeah, well, um, we'll you know, I, I, think, I think so many Republicans yeah. will be yep. jumping to attend yeah. those events. <laughs> Craig, um, anywhere Craig they can get ready. a free glass of wine and, and say hello to the king, they will be there. Don't you Craig's worry. Craig's big moment. He's ready for it. Uh, <laughs> this is my big moment. What are you yeah. talking about? Tonight yeah. is your big moment. It doesn't get bigger than this. <laughs> Craig Foster, Tanya Mahalik, good to see you both. Oh. As always, thank Thanks, you so much. Have a great weekend.